Welcome to Get On Extra. We have a massive week of racing ahead. Of course, tomorrow is Caulfield Guineas Day. Three Group 1s on the card and we've got the $20 million, the Everest up in Sydney. Lots to look forward to and plenty of winners that we are going to find. We have got tips galore today. Yes. BZ, Matt Hill and SD. Looking hey, forward to the weekend. How's it going, Lizzie? You I'm good? great. I'm excited. You? Oh, proper, actually. <laughs> I can't wait for this weekend. Caulfield, Rail True. Perfect condition. She's been a little cool here in Melbourne, but the Everest and the King Charles now. The once upon a time, George Main, wasn't That's it? Yes, right. was. Yes. Has been moved and got a new trophy, so someone will be walking around with the um, King Charles on. Um, the crown. The crown, the crown on his on. head. Well, yeah. we've seen you walking around with a crown I wouldn't on mind recently. The, I wouldn't <laughs> mind the crown if I won a $5 million <laughs> race, but it does look a really good card of racing in both states. and. Hopefully the uh, track continues to dry out at Caulfield, which it should and should be on a perfect surface there. Yeah, Maddie, obviously mm. a great day of racing. It is really, Caulfield Guineas Day is a purist day, yeah. isn't it? It's all about the three Group 1s, the Caulfield Guineas. We're seeing some terrific horses to party, militarise. Sure. They're going to face up against each other. So a really mouth-watering contest. For sure. And you mentioned that clash of militarised to party. Could be a match race, but I think the race is deeper than that. I think it's a fascinating Caulfield Guineas. I don't know which of the three uh, feature races is the highlight. Uh, Alligator Blood and Just Finds a fascinating clash and then Amelia's Jewel to bring it home in a tour rack, which is probably a bit more open than what people think. So, looking forward to it. Yeah, massive day of racing. So, we're going to kick things off by trying to find our best bets from races one to three. This is the early cash and and Maddie, you're going to kick things off because you're really playing hard at Caulfield. You're going in races one and two. Yes, indeed. We're going to try and get it early. I've had a good uh, look in the house of mirrors this week because I was putrid last week. <laughs> oh, a bit so, of Windex. Yeah, a little bit of Windex mm. and uh, with all the funny faces and everything. And I'm, I'm back. So Kettle Hill in the first. Uh, gee, this was a good run at Sandown the other day. Finished just as fast as Wishlaw Lass, who starts favourite later on in the program in one of the better races. Second up with Mark Zara aboard, I think Kettle Hill will get the right run and win the first. What do you uh, think about race number two as well? There's a really nice filly, Appian Girl. She did a yep. good job last preparation in Queensland. Yes, yeah, she did, and I really liked her jump out recently. She just slid through the line beautifully. She's very fast. She brings different form lines into the fillies that she's up against uh, here at Caulfield. I think Appian Girl will make her own luck and be very hard to beat. Yes, listed winner, placed at Group 2 level. She's quick, not much yeah. of her. Looking forward to seeing her in the mounting yard on Saturday, folks. Uh, you know who else I'm looking forward to seeing in the mounting yard? Who? Carini. Carini can win the yeah. third to Herbert Powell. You win, you're in the Caulfield Cup. Scratch last week from uh, Flemington because this was the target and it comes up a weak race. So I love the 53 kilos. Tricky Mickey D from gate one. He can't stuff it up from there, Lizzie. Um, <laughs> what I liked about uh, Carini's win last start, Zed, and I think you're with me, was the step up to 1700 at Flemington. Burnt the candle a little bit. It was a sitting duck from the top of the straight, but it was strong late. I think the query with this horse when he first arrived in Australia is, was he going to be sharp enough early on in the preparation? Because his form over 2000 metres and beyond was quite solid in France. He was purchased as a potential Cups horse, and now he gets an opportunity to get into his right distance range. He showed great acceleration at 1400. He was ridden on the pace over 1700 and was tough. And I think he just maps so well from that inside draw. There's not a lot of depth in this race. I think military mission coming down from Sydney has got some decent form, but giving away weight, I don't know if they can sort of give that to Carini down on the minimum. I think he'll win this and he'll be a live contender in the Caulfield Cup It'll in seven days. It'll be a sprint race one at the Herbert Power. The Carla Paws come out, so not it's with, a smallish yeah. field. Well, with Gaze horses, they like to get Yeah, rolling. but it's not the type of horse that really likes to sort of dash early. Like he's, mm. in he's, a couple of his runs, he's got back and hit the line. Yeah, 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 but he's hard fit coming he out is, of from Sydney is. and the only way he can beat him because he hits that flat he's, spot is he, to get... He's best ridden with a set. Yeah. That's the best The best races that he's run, military mission, oh. in the last couple of runs is when he's been ridden with a sit. Yeah. That's how I suggest they will probably ride him. Yeah, I don't know if there's a huge amount of pressure in this race, and I hope that's the case. I'm hoping that's the case because Carini's got yeah. all the um, aces in his hands, really, because he's from Barrier 1. Which one? Danny O'Brien. Yeah. He's flying at the moment. <laughs> I think if you, you'd be about 40% profit on turnover if you backed every one of his uh, runners from his last 100 starters. So he's flying. That's man. Yes, Did that's he? man. <laughs> Another stable that's absolutely <laughs> flying at the moment is the Kiramara Dave Eusta stable. That's where I'm going. Uh, race number two in Sydney, horse number five. Uh, a horse that uh, BZ has had on top a couple of times, Garza mm. Blanca. He looks as though he gets the right run in transit. It is a deeper race than what he's faced up against recently, but he does look as though he's going nicely. He's 
He's got a great turn of speed and I'm happy to stick with him in race number two. Moving on to Randwick. Well, we have got some great racing up in Randwick. Of course, it is the Everest and we also see the running of the King Charles. We're going to kick things off, though, in the gloaming stakes. I'm with Tom Kitten. I'm wondering if you guys all agree with me. I, he's been he's been solid in all of his runs this preparation and he finds a race which I think is probably a little bit more inferior to what he has raced against recently. And I think his run was better than what it looks last time out. It got back in a race. There wasn't a lot of change. There wasn't a lot of horses that were making ground. It was quite an on-pace dominated day down to the inside. So I think you can bounce back to and, and the inside gate as well, well drawn kindly, 1,800 metres. I think that's what really plays into his favour. Now, well, of course, we've spoken about uh, the Everest. As long as he stays off the milk, he'll be a good oh. chance. Oh, OK. You don't kitten, like him. The kitten. Yeah. <laughs> Snowman will give him a good run for his money. He, he's got good form around Riff Rocket. You're meant to keep those jokes for your last segment. Just building up to the dad's joke. OK, right. What about the Everest? Let's talk about it. Obviously, there Ooh. is, you know, plenty of talent all the way yes. through. I'm with the favourite, think about it. Been with him all the way along. I think the reason I've settled with him is just the draw. He looks to get a perfect run. In any type of scenario that plays out, he's going to be the one that's favoured. If there's no speed, he's going to be able to finish off at the top of them. If there is speed, he's in it for a long way. So. Yeah, I thought his form... Oh, look, I thought he had to come up a cog. Like, I know he's been winning and consistently winning, but that Queensland winter form, I don't know if it's as strong as the autumn in Sydney Ooh. or the spring in Melbourne. And that's my query with him. I think he's more of an eight or nine dollar chance than a four fifty chance. Personally, I'm happy to be with. I wish I win from the inside draw. I think he gets a lovely run on the back of the speed. And I'm also going to have something on the two three year olds here. I think Shinzo can bounce back in a big way. Yep. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Cylinder with the blinkers on runs really well. There's not a lot of pace, the race, and they both get great runs. It's key, isn't What's it? There's 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 lack of pace. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought uh, Overpass is a horse that's going to lead in the race. And alcohol free will roll forward with him, Marzu, and then you've got Hawaii. 5 -0. What do they do? Hard fit. They can sit on Probably speed. Why not be as close as you can? But if I'm riding one of these three-year-olds, and you mentioned Shinzo and also Cylinder, Cylinder, they've got the light weights, and they've both got good gate speed. Why wouldn't you jump and be there and try and be as close as you can, say some of these better geldings and, and stronger horses with the sprint, with the sprint light like private eye, I wish I win, he'll be stuck in on the fence here and need to get some luck at some stage and think about it. I reckon they can out-sprint them. Yep. To be honest, I think think about it's a winning machine. I think it'd be very hard to beat. And if I'm Lukey Nolan right and I wish I win, I'm sitting back there, scraping the paint, collecting bird poo on my right foot and just waiting for the gates to open up inside he's the 100 just, yeah, metre mark. He's just and he going to need a little fly. bit of luck. Yeah, he will. And if he gets Late. the luck, he's yeah. the winner. But I'm sort of banking on him, you not. Know, this, th him not getting the luck. And if a slowly run race, they can bunch up and there mightn't be a lot of gaps. But I'm hoping he can begin well enough to just potentially get on the fence and maybe one pair back or two pairs back if there's not a lot of speed. And if that happens, he sh hopefully should get a crack at it. If it's controlled in front, he's sitting off that speed. And they're all going to pressure one another to be there at some stage and they're going to drop off, capitulate at some stage, Ian Healy, and yeah. he'll get the gaps. <laughs> That's it. Well, we've also got the King Charles, which was the George Main, and there's some really great contenders. Of course, we set to see Mr. Brightside in Sydney. Uh, again, he's been a Doncaster winner in the past, a dual Doncaster winner. And we also see him front up against Fangirl. Have you got any firm opinion? Yeah, I'm quite keen on Fangirl here. I think dry track, 1,600 metres, with James McDonald from a good draw. The last time she met Mr. Brightside, um, she was only beaten two lengths, and it was on a heavy track in the Doncaster, and she hates it wet. So I think she can turn the tables on him, and you're getting a great price to find out. Mr. Brightside's a terrific horse. That's obvious for everyone to see. His form's outstanding. Every time he's travelled, he's performed. There hasn't been too many times he hasn't performed. I just think he's a little short at $2.15. So, well, I agree with you. Fangirl's a great chance from her inside barrier. James McDonald's three for three on her. Mm -hmm. And he goes aboard again. Um, so we're trying to match that Fangirl, second to Animo in the Chipping Norton and the George Ryder, and she's at her best form now that win this preparation against Mr. Brightside, who looks like he's gone to another level. Switches over from Victoria. He's a dual winner at the track and Tribune at Doncaster. And I think that him from gate eight will be just sitting back Craig Williams. It wouldn't surprise me because, once again, you've got Zaki who controls the race. Who wants to then take it up to Zaki? Is it Nugget? Uh, who or was it Golden Mile that wants to float across? Who was a sitting duck last start? If Craig Williams begins well on Mr Brightside, I would not be surprised if he was in the first four. Yeah. I, I Look, I think that Mr Brightside looks hard to beat yeah. and Fangirl should be able to run second. But I've had something on my Oberon at the $41. Ooh. I Ooh. think that he's a terrific each-way chance. He was 
so good like the previous round last time out it was just a race that didn't suit him and i just think he's absolutely flying this preparation if we get any type of juice in the track or any little bit of rain he's going to be absolutely suited so he's my on top selection my each way play in the king charles there's a couple of horses that you both like in the last race but a separate you're Ooh. not on the same page so you're up against each I'm other go again first. Go. <laughs> More secrets in the last in the angst. I thought her return was great first up over 1,400 metres. She was terrific in the autumn out to the mile, running well in those uh, top quality mares contests. She's got no weight on her back. Uh, she's drawn a good gait. This looks to be the race that she's been set for and I think she'll be hard to beat. Okay, $4.60. I'm going to go Absolute Flirt, who I thought was terrific. Super win first up 14, gets to the mile, second up form, no problem whatsoever. Craig Williams, he's drawn little orcs, but this is a big field and I think it's a field where you want to be three wide with a little bit of cover and stay out of trouble. This horse has got an amazing acceleration. Big, strong horse, so we'll need that galloping room stuck a little deep. Very good. Well... Mm. Hopefully Great day. We've got a couple of winners. Hopefully yeah. we've, we've, we've dissected. If we haven't infused you, we've definitely, hopefully, found a few winners. Time for Jelfs on the Shelf. Hey. Hey. I need to be welcome back, Maddie. Uh, you've almost got the same costume on. <laughs> yes, <Matthew>. I do. <laughs> <laughs> now, Matthew, you've been to Hawkesbury a few times, haven't you? I called it Hawkesbury for a long, long time. In fact, at the old Hawkesbury and the new Hawkesbury as well. So, what have you found at Hawkesbury? Well, there's, there's, this is at Hawkesbury. I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> horses, there's a lot of horses at Hawkesbury that that um, have no luck and, and this guy has found himself right in the <laughs> middle of two tracks at the moment and he's very limber. Watch um, how he gets underneath and does the limbo here. He's oh, a perfect he's, size. He's a young cult too there as you can see. <laughs> yes. Old mate on the... Old mate, <laughs> old mate on the... Okay. Old, gee, okay. old, old mate on the track there would be saying move. The cow on the track here at move off the track. They've all moved <laughs> in <laughs> and they're off and racing. It's very good from Luke Marlow. You, you and Luke Marlow obviously Sorry, have Luke, the same I, um, uh, realize God's you know. way of thinking. Yeah, yeah God's Hawkesbury country. boy. Are you a Hawkesbury boy? Yeah, eh? I the do. Hawksbury? Oh, there you go. There you go. Well, with the job I've got, it's an absolute privilege to sit in the broadcast box with seven or eight monitors, you know, racing from all around the country. And this uh, just took my notice on Saturday. Can you believe this? <laughs> what are the odds of this? So King's Gambit, who's obviously a very nice three-year-old, romps in at Rose Hill. Yes. A horse called King's Gambit at exactly the same time That's incredible. won in yeah. Singapore. And you got what, six like, bucks. <laughs> yeah. Like the chances what of them winning it mean, times, you know, well, you, you know, you're a 30 to 1 yeah. chance, you know, 5 times 6 is 30 to 1 chance of them winning even their respective races, yes. let alone them being on the same day at the same, same time, time and that both occurring. So that's I wonder incredible. if King's Gambit in Singapore is the same enigma as the one here. Well, there's a chart. I mean, the, the closest thing I saw to that was the, the day that Desert Hero won a race at Royal Ascot and a Desert Hero won here. But uh, that's well, that's quite extraordinary. What would the double have paid? King's Gambit into King's Gambit. <laughs> Speaking of extraordinary, um, I'm, I'm quite uh, the, uh, what would we say, um, enjoy, I do like a, a gamble, but right, this is taking it to the next level. <laughs> okay. um, I was just wanting to Centric. temper a little bit. Yeah. So this is Mark Davis, who's worth $2.3 He's the owner of the Las Vegas Raiders, and he was just there having a bit of a slap before he got on the plane <laughs> in the hotel. So some people have just have just got it in their yeah. veins. He just can't help it. Some people are sick. Yes, that's probably the right <laughs> word that I was thinking of, that I didn't want to gravel myself a little bit earlier, but we've got there eventually, Maddie. Thank you. <laughs> Thank what you What do you say? That. He's probably just getting rid of a bit of change in That's all right. When you're bored, you're waiting for your partner who's probably looking at the, you know, cosmetic shops and you're yeah. sitting there at the airport. That's very, and just have that's a little bit of stereo stereo you need to get off your chest there, BC. No, 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 <laughs> no. You can experience that. Well, There's if you were two point... that like to have a partner as well. Yeah, if you've you got 2.3 billion, I suppose you've got a little bit to waste anyway. Alice just having a little lie back on the recliner and this pricked my is Lizzie, we're going to Ipa the Switch, race three. <laughs> Check out the Cornella in this race. There's a lot of booty. He liked him pretty the inside. But wish I had as clear two lengths in front. us all too good. Wish I had. Wish I had one second. A lot of booty for <laughs> Javita. Now that woke me up and from my little slumber. You're lacking in the trunk area. I wish I had a lot of booty, Lizzie. Um, <laughs> uh, no, okay. So, now, to be on, say, and all the team and all the single ladies, put your hands up. That's a fantastic little Cornella there if you were playing along. Keep digging. Yeah. Keep digging. I wasn't going to ask You're you a question there, Jumps on the You're shelves. On your own. <laughs> so that's next. <laughs> uh, right. Well, that. we will go to Caulfield quite swiftly. Um, <laughs> race four, number three, Essione. Uh, I 
thought that this race looked as though she was a great each way chance. She ran really well in the silk stocking at the end of last preparation. Her trials have been really good. She draws a nice gate and at the double figure odds, I think she can run really well. I didn't mind uh, Rose Quartz in that race. I think she sets mm. up quite well. It was a good run first up. She's drawn out deep. With the westerly breeze, I don't think having a wide draw will be too much of a concern. She'll sit three wide with cover and tricky Mickey D. Hopefully we'll get another winner there on Rose Quartz Simmer. Yes. To use uh, one of Simon's uh, expressions, come on, man, uncommon oh. James. <laughs> Second up, three from three. It's just a good sprint. An Oakley Plate winner, $2.30. Should be getting the cash. What do you think about it, the run last time with this Fura? It was there wasn't okay. much separating them, yeah, was there? it was okay. Sit on as Fura's. Yeah, I think it'll sit on her hammer and tack. Yeah. And he's a bit got more a good conviction turn of foot. with you. Come on, man, Matty. Go. Bit more. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Two dollars well, thirty. Line as well. Yeah. Look, I think just fine. Rock hard fit. Alligator blood. A little bit of a question mark at two thousand metres. Love the blood. He's got a big heart, but just fine. I reckon from that run in the Metrop, they'll try and take him on middle stages. Turn into a bit of a test. I think just fine. At three point eight is just fine. I hope it's a test, Matty, because I'm going for the one that'll be sitting back, patient from the wide draw, and Dewis. She was outstanding at Caulfield behind Alligator Blood in the Underwood Stakes. I think she'll appreciate the step up in trip to the 2000. This is going to be a hard run race and she'll be the closer that'll get over the top of it. Into 482 too. We went up Beautiful. big on her at Sportsbet. Sportsbet punters have voted with the tippity Sports tap in the app. Sportsbet mare as well. You're also in oh. race number 8 as well. Yes, I quite like this one. Papillon mm. Club who Two starts back at Flemington, she drew wide and they went back and she followed Amelia's jewel and she was left in her wake, but she actually closed off quite nicely. Nice was good. Yeah. Then they went to uh, Mooney Valley on st for the stock stakes, again against Amelia's jewel, and she missed the, missed the kick. Like, she just stood there at the start and then was out the back. They ran a track record time. She was never in the hunt at all. If she can begin better, she's got Ben Mellon back in the saddle. I think it's a great opportunity for her to bounce back in a big way. And she can begin well. She actually was up near the leaders in a 1,200 metre race early on in the campaign. So pretty keen on Papillon Club. What about... sneaky one in that. Too. What is that? Paul Snowden. Eight weeks fresh. Taj Need. Winkers on. Drawn a gate. Taj Need. Taj mm. Need. Taz, yeah. we, we have really thrown out the tips today. Yeah. That's good. What about the Caulfield Guineas? Geez, it's a great race. It's a tipping show. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, militarises. I thought it was town. something that you were... Militarises in town. Joke show. Come on, this is a three-time Group One winner. What's he worth? Come on, cult? man. What's he worth? This cult by Dundee. If you were to buy him, Lizzie, what would you? What's your spending? Wouldn't well, get much change out of twenty, would you? Twenty million. Thirty plus plus. He, even I mean, he's, even a, he's now he's now a, well, he's a dual Group One winner as a two-year-old. Yeah. Mm. He's a, now a three-year-old Group One winner yeah. in the Golden Rose, which is a stallion-making race. And if he's able to win the Caulfield Guineas, mm. well, he's he's. Yeah, a lot of already been, They've already bought into him, I believe. Yeah, our field, yeah. yeah. We so can't afford him, him, basically. So, I've um, got his three-quarter brother, remember that. Oh, have you? Have you got <laughs> shares in him? No, it's all gone. Oh, well, we're going to get rid of him <laughs> right here and get on extra anyway. Militarise, I think, will sit back three deep with a little bit of cover. And I think he'll be just too good. He's winning the champagne at this distance as a two-year-old electric, but Chris Waller put the blinkers on him last start. And when he got a little bit of a gap, boy, oh, boy, his acceleration was lethal. And he'd do it again at Caulfield. Yeah, I, look, I'm with him as well. I'm with Militarise. I think he's one of the better bets on the card. But, Maddie, you're not completely sold with just a two-horse race. You mentioned you think it's a bit deeper. Yeah, look, I, I think Stepati's going to be hard to beat. He showed his versatility up on the speed at Mooney Valley and then had to take a, take his medicine there at Caulfield and attack the line, savage the line, not fully wound up. I think he's a terrific horse. I think it's a great clash, but King Colorado was good late mm -hmm. in the Golden Rose. I'm convinced King Colorado's a nice horse. Mm. Uh, I think it's a little bit deeper than a match race. He'll get, to, he'll get a better run, Stepati, drawn a better barrier than sure, he did sure. last start, yeah. which they rode him quite for the first time, so he had a, added another string to his bow winning last start, didn't he? But there wasn't much between them. No. And we'll even be... a horse like Southport Tycoon, I love that improvement to the run in the, the Guineas Prelude. And I wouldn't be surprised from a decent gate with the Harry Coffee that Southport Tycoon's a really good roughie okay, in it. Okay, so that's... Now, we've, we've spoken about uh, we've only the Guineas. The field Three then, that you so mentioned. Okay. Anything else? We have to have our last word on Amelia's jewels. Yes. She was amazing <clears throat> last time out at the Valley. This is obviously a you know big test for her. What are, what are we thinking? Well, it's not easy with the 56 kilos no. giving away weight to male opposition, <laughs> but she just might be one right out of the box. And with a 52 minimum, I don't think she's poorly treated at the weights, uh, but it's going to be a great contest. She's very short. I, yeah. I, I, if I had to tip one horse, it would be her, but I want to back a couple of others at a price. Attrition, Amenable and Charter House are three roughies that I can see running well. Mm. Yeah, well, for our, um, what is it, back, sack and crack 
Mm. Uh, later on, I've got a minimal in there as a Ooh. bit of a spoiler alert with 52 kilos. If you could just forgive that last run, mm. absolutely He's thrown. a strange we're guinea's run. Oh, just thrown in. We're forgiving, aren't we, of his last run? You have I think to be. And his so. run in the Memsey was the right form lead up to a um, two rack. And the times of his last run show the leader went slow enough early and then they all sprinted from the 800. He just couldn't make ground. I think he still run about 33 and a half his last 600. He just couldn't get into the race. So, so, so exciting for Saturday. Some terrific racing and hopefully we've found you plenty of winners. Time for a winner in the country. It is Hillbillies now. Right, oh, we're going to Hamilton this time for Hillbillies. It's Hamilton Cup Day. Good luck to everybody there. A horse that's been racing really well, a Morfordville winner recently. CR7 yes. is race seven, number 10. And when you get the thumbs up from BZ, who does the form from everywhere, <laughs> from Gloucester Park to I've Sandown Dogs the, uh, to Hamilton races, he's giving me the thumbs up. I've had a look at the Hamilton program because it's a uh, Melbourne Cup Country yep. Series qualifier, that race. So uh, benchmark 70 mile. There's a lot of good horses worth $100,000. So. I did that early this morning. If about we, 6 o'clock, I was if, doing the Hamilton Ford. If I could have a dollar for every time BZ's... I've done that one. Yeah, oh, done it's pretty good, isn't it? No, I, it's, well, it's good to see some of us are doing their homework anyway. <laughs> Stay tuned. Port <laughs> Headland Race 4. There'll be no, something uh, tomorrow. Up. It's out of my jurisdiction. Let's <laughs> head to a break. Come on, get on extra. Plenty more tips to come on the other side. Got one of the Depto dogs. <laughs> Star Patrol, he was terrific winning the uh, Bobby Lewis first up and they went warp speed early and he was very tired late and just held on. Star Patrol is burning rubber late and Star Patrol too good for triple missile, same as he can cause for concern. I'm going with Magic Time who's prepared in Victoria and has been up to New South Wales in the past with Graham B. Magic Time a half, three quarters and pulling away. It's a big day for Nash Willa. Magic Time beat Paracel. I've gone to Kembla Grange, race four, number five, Midnight Opal. The outside smashing da uh, dancer, but it's all Midnight Opal, favourite too good. Midnight Opal. One. Poison Chalice, he was defeated at short odds at Sandown last time, uh, but his run was still very good. Poison Chalice has burst through the middle to give chase. He's still coming, the favourite. He's as green as grass. He'll eat them up. Poison Chalice. Red Cadillac. Red Cadillac, race five, number 10, bolted in this track and trip last start. It can do the same. Vital Jarman keep coming. He has to get desperate. Red Cadillac. Vital Red Cadillac. They'll go to it. Red Cadillac. I think the filly can upset them here, Stretton Angel. She actually ran a quicker time in the Captain Teves than they did in the boys' race. Stretton Angel, the outside tries. It's I am unstoppable. Stretton Angel sticks its head out and out. Going race four, number 12 here at Rose Hills. On Saturday, this horse was uh, terrific last start. Stannis Laus. Way to the stars, 50 out from Stannis Laus, driving and got up. Right on the post, Stannis oh, Laus. Well, Way to the stars. I must say, I some, Very good. Maddie, you and I need a bit of improvement there, but the boys, yep. they held up the team. As Wayne I Walter said, you've got to watch week. film. Yeah. You've got to <laughs> watch films. <laughs> you've got to watch films. Just to clarify, I was on the show last <laughs> week, so when I put the invoice in, I was here. <laughs> Dick. Maddie, we've got time to... We're not looking back, no, we're looking we're forward. Looking, we're looking exactly forward right. to this Queen's weekend Queen's. and it's now time for Drum Kit. And Simon, you can kick things off. Yeah, you know what? I think uh, the first race at Caulfield sometimes, um, when you look at it six... Dollars the field, I think, what could cause the boil over? What's a roughy that I want to get on that can sit on speed at Caulfield, rail true and get the best use of the track? You know what it is? Russian Dancer. I've talked it up, haven't I? Uh, third up, 1700. Got back, Mr. Kick at Mooney Valley, but kept up. I didn't mind the run and is a Vic size winner at Bendigo over the mile and draws four. We'll sit on speed and we'll try and get going at some stage. And it's about $34, is it? Eight at bucks the place. place. Eight, bucks, Eight the place. bucks a place. There you go. Well, there's and that. the place. I'm going the place. Yep. That, well, that's what this segment's called. Drum kit. I'm with military mission on top. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm with military mission. I think that uh, it's obviously we know that you're all with Karini, but I think that he can run terrific. He's got a really good turn of speed. They've been riding him patiently. They ride him like that on Saturday. He'll be a little bit closer, and I think the way that he will finish off, he will be able to run top three. Matty. Yes, well, I think, look, amenable, uh, you know, if, if you're going to have a place bet, you do it in a two-rack handicap. <laughs> They're usually uh, very, very open races, and I think amenable's a serious racehorse at $4 the place. I'll be having that one. I'm going with Fangirl. If you can get anything better than Black Figures about her running a place in a dry track, 1,600 metres, with James McDonald in the saddle, I think it's a good bet to have. Looking to find our best bets elsewhere. I am going to Newcastle. Now, Maddie, have you ever called a Jungle Juice Cup? I have indeed. In fact, uh, I called a few of them when they were at Cessnock and um, they can only be described 
as feral. Have you have you um, jungle juice? Have you ever yes. had jungle juice? Wow. It's rocket fuel. Right. It'll um, blow your head off. And they had the jungle juice cup at Cessnock, and uh, it was their big day. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Sounds there was like plenty somewhere I want to go. Yeah. I th- it was terrific. I've been there. I've been there. Back, back in a past you, life. Yeah. yeah, I've been a few times to uh, Cessnock to the jungle juice cup. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm going to try and find the winner of the Jungle Juice oh, Cup. So it's at Newcastle. It's a little bit more refined <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> Uh, really? Race six, number seven, <laughs> IQ, uh, looks to get a good run in transit uh, from the John Thompson stable and looks to be hard to beat. So We're back going to the Queensland. Juice Cup, um, yes. do you, what type of... Uh, it's what, a bit of local what sort of wear? produce. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just like going to a normal, nice... That country meeting? Yeah, country okay. meeting. Yeah. Hat backwards? Yeah, whatever you want. Oh, said I. <laughs> Right. That jumper would get a start at the Jungle Juice Cup. 617 Mission of Love for me, Eagle Farm. What's wrong with this? From Flushing Meadows, Rosario Parisi. Rosario <laughs> Parisi. Got a bit of friction there. there. Go, there. It'll be a bit of electricity coming your way if you rub me up the wrong way. There's a... Only joking. So Mission, <laughs> mission of Love. Jump to 1,200. Out to 1,500, ridden back, strong home late. Now third up 1,600 metres, Jaden Lloyd from Barrier 7. Flew home as very stiff last start, this runner here, Mission of Love. Can be winning at Eagle Farm. I'm with you, Simo. Everything that you said, I've got the same tip here. I don't go to Brisbane too often, but this horse come up on my Ooh, tick, tick. Uh, ratings and I quite like the way that it's progressing. We're doubling down. Yes. SD? Yeah, beautiful. And I'm going to go again because you know how I love me. WA form. Yes. And the red Cadillac got up last week, you little beauty. Sentimental hero here, one first up. There's a second up winner, gets to six furlongs. Guess who rides up there in WA? Who you want to be on in WA? W Pike. W Pike. Guess what he's drawn, barrier three. Good guess. And he's going to get the similar run that he got first up. Sentimental hero, 380. Yes, please. There you go. Well, this is... Um it's Maddie's segment now. It's from the Hilltops. I don't know how I'm going to stomach this one. This is oh, this is by popular demand good. from some yeah. of our panel. Yes. And Maddie, take it away. Yes, it's with great news I can report we're going back to Japanese game shows. <laughs> yes. And have a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. It's who's going to eat the cockroach first. Look at those crunchy, look at them, those beautiful satay cockroaches. Just delectable. Who's going to, who's going to eat the cockroach? It's team red or team blue. Here we go. Now, it's all about the inhaling and exhaling. Who goes to the right? Keep going, the cockroach. Blue's full of protein. Who wants to eat the cockroach? Go to the blue. She pushes hard. Red. Oh, oh straight to the back of the net. Look at that. What about the oh. taste of that beautiful satay cockroach? Magnificent. Team Red successful. You oh. just can't beat entertainment like that. And now have a look at her friends here. They have magnificent got, got stuff. Over. They've all been shocked. But ma- magnificent. How, how would one train for that? Me? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What was that famous movie line? Just put your lips together and blow. Yeah, right? There you um, go. I tell yeah. you what, uh, you can't beat at a table like that. I mean, that's and what we've been wanting for the last four weeks with popular demand. And folks, no cockle roaches were hurt cockroaches. In, those, uh, in that game. The cockroaches, okay. Oh. Now that is a sport. Time to that move on. Time to move on. Back second crack. Oh, okay, Simon. Come on, Lizzie. <laughs> oh, I spoke about Tarjanit. I think this is very good back. Uh, very good uh, at $18. Winkers on Team Snowden. They know what they're doing. Eight weeks fresh. Drawn the inside gate. Uh, my O'Brien, he is absolutely flying at the moment. He just needs a little bit of luck, and I think he's a great each way play. I've been watching Papillon Club that's last three starts. She's ticking over really, really nicely. I think half let the side down here. Yeah, well, the double figures. Yeah, the problem okay. was if we've had a late scratching. Uh-huh. Nunthorpe has come out. It was double figures. Nunthorpe has just been scratched, so oh. she's come out, which has taken the favourite out of the field. You've got the eye roll there. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Well, we've just got to let her know what's going on. She was getting very angry. Where's your red card? Yeah. Wow. I don't have it. A red shirt. Here we go. The sack file. I like that. Oh, that was beautiful. Where's your red card? <laughs> your red card's here, folks. I'm going to take red card on drawn 12. She sweats up like... Uh, BZ when he's under yes. pressure on get yes, on. she does get very warm. And she's drawn out wide and can't run six furlongs, I don't think, so I'm going to take red car on. <laughs> I thought Yellow Brick was disappointing first up, and I think that he's a little bit of a risk in the Silver Eagle, so I'm happy to take him on. There's a couple of horses that I think can beat him. Yeah, I think Ayrton's best days are beyond him and I'm not convinced he should be as short as what he is. Yeah, I think Red Card needs 1,000 metres and tries to dictate whereas in that race uh, she's going to have to work too hard. Here Here's a little multi for us. Here's our best bets of the weekend, SD. The magic man militarising Chris Waller. Uh, I'm with Tommy Kitten. 
Beautiful. Karina. Uncommon James. Second up. Come on, man. Nice. And there you go, fantastic. Now you know we love our betting with mates and we're all pumping it up. We're pumping it up as we go into spring the betting with mates on your app. Any captains, you, if you're all in the sports bet app, just get someone to click on the bet with mates. You're the captain and you invite all your mates. Get on there, set your uh, buy-in and away you go. Have a little bit of fun like these blokes did. i got a little story for oh, you. You go. ready? Just grab yourself in, folks. Here's another great story. So I landed the quarter on my brother's Bucks party. Four years ago, he's still not married, by the way. $81 shot in the second leg, $51 shot in the third leg. I'm surprised the roof didn't come off the Cobram pub after our horse came down the outside in the last. Memories for life. We celebrated this bet with mates group. Unbelievable. We were just up there and Adam, the Cobram pub. And I guess the reason that he hasn't um, <laughs> sort of cemented the marriage yet is he didn't pay the 25% tax. Oh, right. To the uh, better half. Better half. Hey, okay, right. To celebrate this, though, well, folks, to celebrate the <laughs> bet with mates like group. She was happy with that story. All the Cobram <laughs> Pub boys, guess what? Come on, bring it in, the Cobram Pub boys. Ooh. We're going to give you $500 on this multi. Oh, We're having wow. a bet for you. 500 on the multi. Militarised. Tom Kitten, Uncommon James, into Carini. All the place. Jeez, we've stuck our neck out there. How about that? <laughs> 500 <laughs> at three bucks. All the place. Yeah. yeah. All four on the place. Right. There you go. Oh, it's got to run top so three. Yeah. Such brave. So there we go. Cobram Pub. Here. Be nice if they get $1,000 for the boys. to go for a break. We've got more tips on the other side. More cockroaches. <laughs>Time for Sunday session. There's plenty of racing over the weekend, Simon. You're kicking things off at Ballarat. Off the sports bet Ballarat there on Sunday, and Team Mar uses they dominate, dominate at their home track. Race eight, number fourteen, Yotatsu was finally a winner. First up, this preparation in just her third start. Big girl, big girl. She'll love the mile here. Drawn deep, won't worry because she'll be able to use that big action. Yeah, I know. I'm with another big girl. Moore, she won the thousand guineas at the end of well, the start of her preparation. She's now off to Keeneland. She runs in a, a race over the 1800 metres. Far and wide here. Far and wide. Well, I thought I'd try and find something. Like uh, do you like that? Oh, Sunday I'm morning. Impressed. So you can wake up Sunday morning and you can have a bet straight We're away. We're going to have to lift our game, find something from Gavia Brazil or something next week. That's impressive. <laughs> I'm, I'm not happy going with that. Where are you going, No, I'm going Ballarat. <laughs> I'm going the international location of Ballarat. Um, I think Brazen Lady in race seven is going to be very hard to beat. She's been chasing some nice horses, including Von Hawk last start, and she's had a little bit of value. And you're going Ballarat as well. Yeah, I'm going early in the program, race number two, a first starter from the uh, Robert Hickmott team, goes by the name of Big Jimmer. It was a really nice jump out recently. John Allen to ride about six fifty or six dollars, six fifty. Perfect. Well, we're deep into the spring, and it's now time for extra, extra. Read all about it. We're going to be reading the headlines on Sunday morning. What are they all going to be saying? Triple M it up. Caulfield, of course, the Caulfield Guineas, and it's all about the M's. Mm, here's my headline, folks, as it comes up right now. <laughs> Guineas. You? Triple M, treat Marrera militarised magic. Oh. Very good. Like that? Like that. That's, That's a good really one. Really well, What's mine is uh, going to be focused a little bit oh. on Sydney. It's King Charles Shock. What People are going to think there's been an issue with the yes. royal family. The Miller. Well, according to PVL, apparently King is, the King is coming. Well, so there you go. There you go. <laughs> you go. <laughs> What's going to happen in Imagine. the race at Mo Oberon? Mo Oberon, yeah. 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 Fantastic. Big shock. Uh, I'm heading back to Caulfield for my uh, headline. Surely Amelia's jewel is Cox Plate bound. Be outstanding <laughs> if she wins a two rack and then goes onto a Cox Plate. Absolutely. We'll have to wait and see. My headline, something a little different. Three lions eaten alive at Wembley because <laughs> Australia played in England on Saturday please. morning, but that'll but still be the headline on Sunday. Oh, please. Wow. Yes. You. Did you know that, Simo? Socceroos. Three lions. Wow, Zed, that's good. <laughs> Fantastic. What time is that on? 5.45 a.m. Okay. Saturday. Okay, here's my dad joke, folks. So I know it's a I know it's a highlight of the show. <laughs> I haven't checked this one with HR, so we should be okay. Okay. How much space do fungi need to grow? How much space? As do much fungi? room as they like. Ah, okay. it's not bad actually. Okay. Not bad. Something Thanks for, for the kitties. Thank yeah. you. I like that. Not bad. You like your fungi? Mushroom? Yeah, not, uh, not recently after the headlines. Okay. Oh. Well, you, you're not, not the magical ones or the poison <laughs> ones, of course, they're Lizzie. <laughs> yep. If they're that colour, don't eat them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, let's get on now tomorrow morning at 10.30. <laughs> 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 we'll be back next week for plenty more tips. No. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.